from the sky Just another story Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas. My guest today is Grandma V.K. Durham. To me, she's Grandma and always will be. But before I bring her up, before I bring her up, I want to, I want to share with you something that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about money, sums of money, and everything that's um, happening in this country and the world, and the world, but uh, I, I just want you to think that the next time you hear a politician use the word billion in a casual manner, think about whether you want the politician spending your tax money. How many, how many zeros in a billion? Well, oh, let's see, George Bush gave away two trillion. That's a that's a little bit more than a billion, but let's just, let's just take the small stuff first. Let's just talk about the small stuff first. A billion is a difficult number to uh, comprehend, but one advertising agent did a good job of putting that figure into some perspective for you. A billion seconds ago, it was 1959. A billion minutes ago, Jesus was alive. A billion hours ago, our ancestors were living in the Stone Age. A billion days ago, no one walked on the earth on two feet. A billion dollars ago was only eight minutes, eight hours and twenty minutes at the rate our government is spending it. And with this thought still fresh in your brain, just, just take a look at New Orleans. It's amazing what you can look uh, learn with some simple division. Louisiana Senator Mary Landrieu is presently asking Congress for $250 billion to rebuild New Orleans. Inter interesting number. What does that mean? If you were one of the 484,674 residents of New Orleans, that's every man, woman, and child, you each get $516,528. If you are, if you have one of the 188,251 homes in New Orleans, your home gets one million three hundred and twenty-nine thousand seven hundred and eighty-seven dollars. If your family of four, your family gets two million sixty-six thousand twelve dollars. Washington D.C. Hello. Your calculator's broken. Grandma, what do you think about that? <laughs> oh, you know I'm not allowed to think. Every time I think we're going to get in trouble. <laughs> oh, and, 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 you know, let me, let me open up this, folks. And this, the, all of this, this is all synchronicity. This all comes in. I had Greg's grandma schedule, and and these emails. Some of these, a couple of these emails that I'm reading, just came across my desk this morning. It's like God is using the internet. He just says, "Oh, Clay, you need to see this." The central economic solution to unleash trillions of dollars for the U.S. economy is uh, is simple. Our Robert Barron's monetary system must be recognized as a national debt supply that only profits the banks that create the debt. This Orwellian opposite of a national money supply must be ended. In addition, it's shocking for most Americans to, to discover we've already overpaid in tax totals in the several trillions of dollars as revealed in collective government's published comprehensive annual financial reports that my friend Walter Buren told you about. We need this ended and transformed to maximize the benefits of that money to the American people. And, and why this is so important, uh, talking about synchronicity, because this is exactly what Grandma wants to do with her trust, with funds here, and restore the republic to an honest monetary system. 
Now the U.S. will unleash trillions of dollars worth of economic productivity with the end of government debts, creating money for the direct payment of public goods and services, and creating at cost credit lending as a public service that benefits the public rather than the private banks. Well, nobody was paying attention to that because I think it's rather funny why we look right now to people that have got copies of the trust that was filed on, I think, June 17, 1997. But people have got copies of that. They know that that, that portion of the trust up to Y2K can only be used here in the United States for the re restoring of the republics, getting the people back to work again. And that's what I mean by restoring the republics. I don't mean getting out there and raising hell and going to battle and putting on your suit of, <coughs> your suit of mail and picking up your axe and your sword and throwing on your helmet and going out and slaying the dragon. What I mean is just get busy Get these, get the safety net under the states or the republics where the people are going to be safe. Now here's what we're looking at. Here's what we're looking at. I have a, a, so, a young man down in Korea, he's in the military, he's scared to death, absolutely scared to death. And of course, everybody knows that the banks have been, there's been a run on the banks down there in South, South Korea. Of course, you won't hear anything out of North Korea. But the anchors back in 2004, 2005, somewhere back in the early 2000s, they led everybody to believe that Russell Herman wasn't married. Of course, you know everybody. Uh, the Koreans flew their attorneys up to Washington County, Illinois, and no, they couldn't find anything on uh, Herman being married to, Dur to V.K. Durham. Well, no, he wasn't married to V.K. Durham. He was married to Ben Herman. We had married the second time because we had lost our marriage license. But anyway, they led those Koreans to believe that Russell had authorized them to do certain specific things. This you had all this counterfeit collateral. So now, Clay, what you've got is those things have come to you down there in, in Korea, both North and South, and we're about to go to war over them because those counterfeits can't pay off. Now, I just made Justice Department aware of that this morning. Are they actually? But, are they actually talking to you, Grandma? I mean, are they listening? Is is this having any effect, or or has? Yes, ha yes. It, uh, I, there's stuff that I cannot talk about, and there's stuff that I, right now it's just being premature. And but the, but the point is that there's stuff going on that. Uh, uh, they're finding out that Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan didn't have the authorization to put out all of those instruments. And that they're holding a bunch of stuff that's, that's not even worth toilet paper. That they've got black and white copies when I've got the color. So we've got a global problem here. And I think one of the reasons that Hillary brought in her uh, diplomats from all over the world is the fact that those little diplomats had diplomatic immunity and were out there helping her doing a lot of money laundering that had been going on since the 80s. Now, this morning, I made you, when we talked, earlier. I made you aware. I said, get your pencil out. Let's write this down. What did I write tell you to write down, Clay? October 20th, 1982. Saddam. 
Uh, and you were talking about Saddam. Yeah. We sold, uh, Rusty and I sold his three by three by three oil contract. And that contract traded down there at the World Trade Center at the uh, offices of Hill, Button Nash, and in specifics, uh, Nathaniel Rebell and Maureen Daniels. And Maureen Daniels represented the Onassis shipping firm. Well, Amasa shipping, unbeknown to anybody else, was shipping that oil. And it was coming in to Zapata, which is George Bush, and to Union Oil, to their refineries. Well, it was on a three by three by three contract. Well, that's nine years. Now you figure out what happened nine years later, buddy. Desert Storm? What Desert nine years from 1982. Desert Storm, 1991. Yeah. Well, Saddam had gone over to Kuwait to get his money. They wouldn't let him have it. And so he went back and got his troops in the Desert Storm. But then came another problem. It was those CDs that was coming from those failed SNLs. What was there, eighty-seven billion dollars in CDs? And the Bush kids, the Keatings, John McCain, John, you're getting your name mentioned, and all of those little guys. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Grandma. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't use that name on this show. I prefer Songbird McCain. <laughs> I tell you what, Russell didn't like him either. <laughs> but anyway, um, those were marketed out to Asia and into the European and down into Latin America and over into Italy and around. Well, now those things are coming to So that in 1991, they had to come up with something, so they issued, did a two 120 billions. One went to Bush, one went to Clinton. Well, you know, the Bush boys, uh, the kids were being threatened by the Clintons. If, and so the, that's how the Clintons got their 120. Well, anyway, the Bush boys, the little Bush boys, were part of that Joe Hunt down in Texas, that Billionaire Boys Club, which is part of the Menendez brothers from La Jolla that was murdering people and stealing what property they owned and putting it in the money markets. But these have become, and that was Jack Kemp, your baseball players and your football players. Jack Kemp, John Diakini Stowe, Aerial Life Systems, uh, Palm Springs Baseball Club and that group of people. Well, now then, uh, these little guys started to be, they became your little, what they call out there, the Black Knights. Well, there's Black Knights and White Knights and Pink Dragons and Green Dragons and White Dragons and Purple Dragons with pink polka dots. And, you know, it, it's just ridiculous. How are you going to say these people are a bunch of damn frauds? I don't care what name you cut, call them, whether they're a dragon or a knight, they're a fraud. Now, until we get all of this straightened out, we've got to get it straightened out. If we don't get it straightened out, and if we don't Seek out, locate, and identify. And a lot of military people are listening to this. Seek out, locate, and identify. Seek out, locate, and identify. Do you know what I'm saying to you people? Seek out, locate, and identify. The congressmen who have been on the take, the Manchurian candidates, the president's kids, the president's wives, the president's ambassadors, the economic hitmen, 
who have brought this global catastrophe down upon not only the world, but it's brought it down on all of us. And now we're looking at, at a country down there, too. You've got North Korea and South Korea. North Korea has got one hour of electricity per day for its own households. Now, something else I want you to think about. All of this crud that's going on in the Far East, every bit of that is over oil payments, which were commodities, which are commodities, and oil payments for the oil there, for the Iranian oil, the Egyptian oil, the um, Saddam's oil, and oil, oil, oil. All you have to do is just look at an oil country, and you're going to find that oil has been paid for with counterfeit instruments written off of the stuff I hold in trust, but they're blackballing what we've got in trust so you kids can't use it. They want to take the whole system down. Well, I don't think they're going to be allowed to do that. Because when Mrs. Clinton has to haul all of her little diplomats back in the country who've operated with diplomatic immunity in this global banking fraud, and then we've got Chairman Greenspan, who got us into this, quite frankly. He overrode the, he underwrote the euro with 80% of the euro with collateral from my trust, but he didn't ask me for the permission to do it. Now you've got Clinton out there with Leo Wanta. They just backdated some damn instruments back to Ronald Reagan, brought them forward, and started formulating their uh, global, new global financial system. Well, Wanta while was Greenspan, a... While Greenspan's out there gathering everybody up, and he's got the acres out there stealing, there, where people are putting up 50% in gold, that's going to be split 50-50 with Alan Greenspan and his that are reserved, they're setting up the uh, OITC over there, the Office of International Treasury Control. And that bunch of yo-yos is planning on, after the United States is bankrupt and everybody else is bankrupt, they're going to bring what they stole from you back over here and protect you with it. That's a hell of a plan, if you ask me. What do you think, Clark? I, I think I think this whole thing has been so laid out, you know, they, they, that it, it's just to put us into slavery. It's just to put us into slavery. Total slavery. I mean, we've been a slave anyway for a hundred years. It's ever since the Federal Reserve took on, we've been in slavery. They have not paid a debt on with taxpayer dollars since it got in at, to, uh, as the, since they had act of Congress we put them in there to pay the debts of the United States. They haven't paid any debt, they just twisted it and stole everybody's damn infrastructure, their property, their homes, their lands, their water rights, even the air you breathe. And they've done it all over the world. Now there's the culprits. The culprits lie right there with the Federal Reserve and that executive branch. And that bunch of yo-yos, they keep on money laundering and, and causing trouble throughout the world and paying bills that they know they're using somebody else's collateral and that somebody else is not authorized. The use of it. Now there's got to be some accounting here. There has got to be some accounting. This can't go on. There is no account. I mean, we there there was a film up on YouTube 
Grandma, that uh, of, of the woman who was supposed to be the Inspector General of the Federal Reserve, she couldn't tell anything. <laughs> so that she didn't know which side of her was up. That's right. They don't have any oversight. And and the the FBI and the Secret Service are in on this. I would say the Secret Service is in on it. I wouldn't, because their only duty is to protect the President of the United States. But I will tell you something. There are a lot of good men out there in the FBI. There's an awful lot of good men in that Justice Department. But there's some real stupid knuckleheads in that Secret Service when they think that their only duty is to protect a president who's out there doing money laundering, authorizing counterfeit U.S. debt instruments. Now I'm going to tell you something. Personally carried boxes and boxes of hard copy, irrefutable, undeniable evidence in pursuit to Title 28 of the U.S. codes, the evidence codes, took that, those documents over to Secret Service, Agent Kennedy and Agent Marty Gillum, and, and Kennedy told me that he, he was not going to investigate any of this because his old uh, counterfeiting in, in the Philippines because his only duty was to protect the President of the United States. Well, uh, this is kind of sick because, and I told him, I said, you know better than that. I said, this comes under uh, 18471. I said, this is counterfeiting prime bank instruments. I said, you're going to have more trouble here than you check stick it. My only duty is to protect the president. I said, you're a chicken, fine chicken shit son of a bitch. I know what your duty is just as well as you do. And so the battle has been on. I said, if you won't protect the American people, I will. But now we've got a problem. We got It's just been allowed uh, this... This... Uh, corruption has just been allowed to go on and on and on. And Clay, I've got something to send to you and I want you to read it real quick. Um, you read it to everybody. Now guys, I hope you're paying attention to what he's going to say. This has just come through. Okay. U.S. has given China eminent domain over U.S. as collateral for its debt. Yeah, I see it. Uh, U.S. given China imminent demand over the U.S. as collateral for its debt. And that's not on the mainstream? Nope. This came in out of the top of uh, AP and you don't play. He, well, uh, they... Huh? We've, yeah, we... I almost feel moved to play a song here for you. <laughs> two two trillion tons, two trillion tons, you know. Oh, my soul to the Federal Reserve, and and the the Federal Reserve is behind this move with China. I mean, communist China. You know, the com, com the Soviet Union. We were in a Cold War with the Soviet Union for fifty years. I, I I'm I'm really wondering who won, Grandma. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a bunch of communists and a bunch of Nazis. We've had nothing but Franklin Delano Roosevelt in there playing hanky-panky with the Duke and Duchess of Windsor who were playing hanky-panky with Adolf. And, and they were all playing hanky-panky with Winston Churchill and Joe Stalin. And, and we've suffered for it. It's been the people of this country that suffered for it.
Well, that's uh, that's true. And it, 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 now, how did how did uh, how did China go uh, take a receivership above and beyond the first mortgage holder, and that's this trust? How did they do that? It's all been behind the scenes. I mean, it started with Henry Kissinger going over there setting up the whole deal. Can you say Tenement Square, you know? It's not good. Now, what about those 232 free trade zones that China is supposed to be setting up here. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's time these Manchurian candidates that are operating in the U.S. House and Senate and in the White House executive branch, they need to be taken to an accounting. These are, that's what this thing was on uh, when uh, this general uh, make this um, uh, situation to where they were uh, uh, supposed to uh, use psyops on members of Congress. Well, how those members of Congress, most of them, were already prisoners of war, like John McCain. And you haven't got a bigger Manchurian candidate in the world than that turkey. Sorry I mentioned that no-no, but... One of my uh, one of my chat room people uh, says, uh, "Does Grandma know anything about Falcon funds, or any correlation there?" No. Falcone, F uh, F A L C O N E. Oh, the Falcones. Oh, I've published on the rumor mill about Mostly, I deal with what concerns this trust and concerns the American people. Now, the Falcone that was part of this, and I can understand that's all part of a big fraud over there that got involved with um, um, that OITC, that focused that OITC. And you know, they even tried to buy this dang trust, and this trust wouldn't sell them. I won't sell out to them. What would I, I'd hell I'd have to float them alone so they could buy it. Grandma, if they own the police, if they own the secret service, if they've got, and, and, now you know that that Israel, this uh, Rothschild colony over there, this safe house, their agents are have infiltrated the, uh, and they, you know, they were communists. They were communists, came out of Russia and took over and set up a safe house in Israel. I, at least that's the way I see it. How do you see it? I think you're absolutely right. This is the banksters, and, and oh, let's see. You know, there, 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 there has to be a little Jewish connection when all of your managers of all of these funds, they got million dollar bonuses with that two trillion dollars that uh, Bush gave away as he walked out of the office. I mean, my God, Grandma. Well, here's what we need to do, and I, I strongly suggest this. Every bit of this stuff that's been stro stolen by these bastards, and they're walking off, it's just like we got a senator, or congressman here. Then I went up and I gave him all kinds of documents. His name is Steve King, represents Allen. I took up, just like I did, I took all that same stuff and then took over the Secret Service. Well, when Steve King was living here in Iowa before he got elected to Congress, he worked just like everybody else. He got up there, wore his construction boots, his khaki pants, his 
just like everybody who's one of us. Well, now that he's gone up to Washington and had a drink of that Potomac water and been helped by U.S. Senate Bank Chairman Charles E. Grassley's aide, William Anderson, to get into the, the group, well, Steve King wears $5,000 suits 